If you've been renting for the last three more in the city of Toronto, in this video, we're going to break down why this could be your prime opportunity to get in the Toronto real estate market during the rest of 2024. And stay tuned to the end for one of the biggest opportunities that I've been seeing here on the ground level in the Toronto real estate market. Speaking of the ground level, I'm Michael Luzes. I'm a realtor here in Toronto and I work actively with buyers and sellers in today's market. And I've helped many tenants make the jump from their rent into a first time purchase here in the city. And in this video, we're going to break down some of those ideas on what to look for and some of the patterns to consider if you are debating getting into the real estate market. If you ever want to book in a call to discuss your situation more in depth, click on that first link in the description down below. As we move forward through 2024, there are two things that have really stood out in the Toronto real estate market. If we look on the rental side, we have seen rent prices remain relatively stable throughout the year so far. And then a report just came out that said, how rent prices are up 9.3% from last year. On the flip side of that, if you're a buyer debating getting into the market, you've just read so many headlines here in June talking about how the real estate market sales are down, one of the slowest months ever, big drop from in the past, all these negative headlines out there, which can be very scary. So let's break down what exactly that means if you are considering getting in the Toronto real estate market and whether or not this could present a pretty good opportunity for you you as a buyer today. Jumping right over to the rentals.ca average rent reports. This is for all property types. If you remember at the start of the video, I mentioned if you've been renting for years or more, how this could present a good opportunity to get into the real estate market on the buy side. And the reason for that is that back in May of 2021, we were basically in full lockdown here in the city of Toronto. Rents dropped to under $1,700 a month. And if I zoom in here, just to show that a little bit better, rents dropped to about $1,700 a month. That's that's all property types in Canada, but in Toronto, you could get a one bedroom for seventeen or eighteen hundred dollars a month. At that time, the year later, another two hundred a month increase over twenty twenty one. And I would say, even if you've been renting for two years at this point, this could also present for opportunity. In May, we saw an increase, and then again in May twenty twenty four, another increase across the board. But overall, that increase from May of twenty twenty one to May of twenty twenty four, about five hundred dollars a month. If you were considering getting a new rental right now. So if you're in a one bedroom and you've been renting at $1,800 a month here in the city of Toronto, you've been there since May of 2021, and you're maybe debating getting into a bigger space or even possibly owning a space. If you came to me and said, I'm looking for a new rental, I would say, well, the new price right now is about $2,500 a month for a one bedroom in downtown Toronto. So that's a huge jump from where things were in May of 2021. If you are looking for a two bedroom, you're looking at $3,000 a month plus. So your payment will effectively be basically doubling. So where does all that come into play if you are considering purchasing your first property here in the city of Toronto? Well, there's a couple areas that I see great opportunity for buyers right now, especially if you're renting in the downtown core and looking to get into the downtown core from a condo perspective or even a townhouse or semi-detached perspective. Let's start here with some of the data that we're seeing here in the market. And I've chosen condos, townhouses, and semi-detached properties because typically for most first time buyers, those are the properties that they're usually starting with here in the Toronto real estate market. I picked Toronto as a whole just to go through some of the stats. And this is the number that we're going to pay the most attention to. And that's months of inventory. The reason we pay the most attention to that number is because anything at six months or above puts us into a buyer's market. If you're taking a look at a seller's market, that's generally a zero to two months of inventory when it comes time to to looking at the data and balances from three to five. Now you might be wondering what the heck does all that mean? Well, let's just talk about that for a second. Active listings at 6,200 and the number of sales thousand. So 6,200 divided by basically a thousand is about six months of inventory. So active listings divided by sales equals your months of inventory. We're seeing prices hang on relatively well, even though months of inventory has now put us into a buyer's market. But generally as months of inventory increases, typically prices start to come back down. If we're looking at the townhouse market here in the city of Toronto, we've seen a big jump in price from March into June. Most likely that could be because there's been less sales and less active listings in general. But looking at the semi-detached properties, and these have been the hottest properties in Toronto all year, 0.7 months of inventory back in March, which means if you are trying to not be in competition for a property in March for a semi-detached property, that was almost relatively 
relatively impossible because at 157 active listings, 222 sales, everything that was even available from the month before sold back in March, kept the average price increasing along through May. But notably in June, we saw a pullback in pricing. So again, when we're looking for opportunities, if you are looking to get into the market, 400 active listings is giving more choice and one in two are selling versus two buyers for every one semi selling. So that number here at 1.282 across the board in Toronto becomes a little bit more affordable when it comes to first time buyers. Maybe you're a couple looking to get into the market for the first time. That being said, if you are looking for a semi in some of the most desirable areas, Bloor West Village, Leslieville, those areas are still very competitive when it comes to great properties in the market. At the start of this video, I promised to mention the most considerable opportunity that I've seen in the Toronto real estate market in basically ever. And that is the down Toronto condo market. We have seen a significant increase in listings since the start of this year. And actually, even if we go back to about October of last year, interest rates kept increasing and we've seen a number of listings on the market and sitting on the market. And this is how that looks. 1,700 active listings, 230 sales. So if your math is any good, 7.3 months of inventory, that is ultra buyer's territory. In fact, that's the highest amount of inventory we have ever seen in the downtown Toronto core CO1. And CO1 goes from Dufferin to Young and down to the water. CO8, which is east of Young to the DVP, Bloor to the water, is basically the same. So if you are looking downtown core for a great opportunity to get into the condo market for the very first time, this could be one of the best opportunities we may ever see. And in fact, it is the best opportunity we have seen in a very long time. This is showing that one in seven condos are selling right now. Generally, there's three things to look out for. And number one is priced. How is it priced in today's market? You are still seeing some bidding war pricing or pricing that's more of a marketing price to set up for a bidding war. However, we're not seeing as many of those sell on offer night. And generally, they're getting relisted at the market price anyways. And in fact, if there are four or five properties in the same building for sale and four of them are not presenting with an offer date, it may be worth going to see the ones that have been sitting on the market for quite a bit of time. And there's another video that I've done which shows how to find the best condo deals on the market. That'd be a great video to watch after this one. Number two, if you are looking for properties, the ones with the not so great photos tend to generally get better pricing for my buyers. So if the photos don't look super, super great and you're able to go in there and look past that and maybe consider more of the layout, the floor plan and the location, you can always do some painting and some over time. That would be a great consideration to get an even better on condos today. There you have it. One of the biggest opportunities I've ever seen for buyers when it comes to condos in the downtown core. If you are considering making the jump from your rent into your first time purchase, be happy to help. You can book a call with me in the first link in the description down below. I've also attached a link to an app called Listed that links directly to my MLS in case you wanted to see what's been happening in the sold data. So what things are selling for and actually selling for on the market here today. And love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below on if you're considering making that jump from renting into buying. I'm Michael Luzes. Thanks for watching.